Well, good morning as we're sitting here at LTV on this beautiful morning, indeed a beautiful morning on the uh, 20, I can't even say 26, January 26, 2023, here with the Hello Hello Show, continuing with the tradition of public access and the tradition of the Hello Hello Show that's been on the air since 1980. Of course, not to fail to mention the contribution by Fraser Doherty, Francis Anne, and of course a huge group of followers that make it their business to enhance and fortify the concept of public access. Here together with us today is Esli Escobar. Thank you so much for showing up. I uh, just have to mention, uh, I, I know Esli only maybe a couple of weeks. Yes. I received this phone, uh, uh, is a phone number from um, here at LTV showing interest in participating in our group show. We met, I saw his work, we liked it, he's here, he's actually part of the show, as I mentioned uh, numerous times in the past, and uh, so, so that, that is good. I, I really thought that uh, it's important for me to talk to you just by way of culture, heritage, style, passion, technique, you know, all of the above. But first I'll, I'll, I'll give you the, the time to uh, say a few words about Esli. Uh, hi, good morning. Uh, hi, thank you so much for having me here. I, uh, well, uh, it's a beautiful day. I'm, I'm glad to be here today. I didn't know what to expect. You know, I never really do interviews. So this is like my first interview <laughs> in a long time. So, uh, yeah, I'm just happy to be here. Yeah, you're in good hands. You know, I, I um, did already close to 5,000 shows, so uh, out of which probably 3,000 interviews. But, uh, um you know the discussion is uh, is, is straightforward and uh, and uh, on uh, on a, in a very comfortable uh, stage. But I want I want I want you to give us a summary, a little bit about your journey, your artistic journey, sure. and uh, because there's so much mystery in your work, uh, even though certain things are obvious, but still the the core of it is very mysterious. Sure, sure. And I see your level of dedication. You know, so many so many things. So t tell us just a little bit about your style and about your. Uh, sure. So. Um Okay, where do I start? I, um, I was born in Guatemala, and I, uh, I came to uh, Long Island in 1994 when I was 10 years old. I went to uh, Hampton Bays High School. I went to uh, Suffolk Community College. I, went to, um, I dropped out of Suffolk Community College, and I went to uh, Institute of Audio Research in New York City. I wanted to learn about audio, and, uh, and so I became an audio engineer. Um, I worked on uh, many uh, music projects, and then in 2008, you know, um, something got in me, and I, I started painting. Um, so from 2008 all the way to 2017, I was uh, pretty much in my uh, family's uh, basement, which I turned into my studio, and I did it dedicated pretty much all that time to painting. You know, I would just go to work. I would come back and be in my studio, uh, going through art books, uh, painting, and listening to music. I also, uh, I DJ, you know, um, I design clothing as well. Uh, in that journey, I learned. Um, and um, I, since 2008, since I started painting, I, uh, I did it pretty much. Um, nobody knew what I was doing. Um, in 2017, I, I found myself with all this work in my studio, um, almost a hundred paintings. And I, um, now it was the question, what do I do? And so I started going to galleries. I started going to, um, uh, events, you know, talking to people and, um, I would go to galleries and offer them to uh, show my work, you know, but I quickly learned that's not how you do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, uh, but there was one place that um, uh, called me uh, in the summer of 2017, which it was the Ramsenberg Academy in Spionk. And um, they told me that the artist that was uh, going to show next month canceled. Mm -hmm. And so there was an opportunity for me to show Wonderful. my work. And that's when I began, uh, 2017, I began to uh, uh, exhibit my work. Um, I have shown my work at the Ramsenberg Academy uh, West Hampton Library, um, uh, Southampton Rogers Memorial, um, Southampton Arts Center. Um, I have uh, done work at the Paris uh, Roadshow with uh, the Paris Art Museum, and uh, my work is now uh, 
part of the uh, Parish Art Museum's collection. That, that, that's that's a wonderful story, and uh, I like I like the idea that you actually found yourself suddenly creating. There was no like, maybe there was an evolutionary process, but not an obvious evolutionary process that happens with most artists. That they have aspirations, they think about it for years. They always want to become artists, and then they do something about it. Then they go to school. Then they, uh, and I feel I can identify what what you say because with me also in 1997, I just suddenly realized that that I'm painting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I realized that I'm painting while I was painting, and I didn't even remember when I started. Correct. And my girlfriend then started pointing out that these are good paintings, you know, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and like you, I said, but what, what do you, what, so I'm going to create 50 or 100. What am I going to do with it? She said, that's where I come in. I'll do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> so it was easy. She just got me a gallery here, a gallery there, and solo exhibitions, you know. And, uh, and then it was quickly enough a crash course into, uh, but uh, so it, in, in your painting, I see how coherent is your process of work when you include do you have many subject matters in each painting even though the style looks uh, 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 focused mm -hmm. and kind of one dimensional the subject matters are so three dimensional the, there's like in each painting at least four or five uh, different subjects how coherent are you about that is it something that happens and then you find out later? Or did you actually build it up in the process and introduce a different layer and a different reality every every time? Well, um, these paintings, uh, they were created, I, I feel, in a uh, time period of a week. You know, um, but I was working, you know, on them pretty much 24 hours. You know, I got lost in the paintings. Um, I think it catches, you know, those moments. It catches the way I'm feeling. Um, there are things that I see during the time that I'm that I'm making the painting, and there are things that I find out later. You know, so um, um, I feel it's a it's a it's a uh, um, it's both. Yes. So the uh, you know coming from Guatemala, I can uh, only from the stories that I know where people work with me, that is just wonderful and beautiful place to be. <laughs> I bet you miss it a lot, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and and then of course uh, later on we're going to talk about your artistic projects there with kids, with schools, which uh, in itself is a wonderful thing to talk about and, and essential and important. But uh, so so how does the equation of your livelihood in, in Guatemala and heritage uh, come to be manifested in your paintings do you see do you see something that is that has that relationship it has everything to do with my paintings um, from from the time that I was here and I went to school um, I uh, first I wasn't able to travel uh, my uh, visa expired you know and so I stayed here for a little longer trying to uh, uh, get my uh, green card and citizenship. Well, I, I, something hit me, and in 2015, I believe, I, um, I, I felt the need to uh, go back. And so um, I went back, and um, it, was, um, it was very hard for me. Uh, everything, you know, well, the way that I looked at things had changed, you know. And um, uh, I went to visit family, but you know my mind was somewhere else. Their mind is somewhere else, you know. And but it was it was a beautiful thing. Um, I came back. Uh, actually, I went to uh, um, to this town, Puerto Barrios, where uh, uh, my my cousin, he's uh, like my uh, my closest family member, uh, Danny. Um, I went to visit him, and uh, during that visit, I went to uh, uh, to the park. And there was this uh, group of kids um, uh, playing tennis. You know, uh, they made up this tennis court, and um, and so um, the rackets and the balls that they had, you know, they were very old. Yeah. And um, you know, I, I was just like, if I could go back home, you know, uh, in West Hampton, uh, all the we have all the the tennis clubs and. And I'm like, I can... Uh, okay, you can call it 100 balls easy. <laughs> easy. And that's yes. exactly what I did. Uh, yes. You know, and uh, I went back and I gave uh, uh, the tennis balls and rackets to the kids. Great. And, um, uh, but then when I came back, you know, uh, I was spending all this time doing uh, other stuff. 
And so uh, when I came back, I, I had to focus on uh, working and making money again so I could uh, keep doing these things. Um, it was a beautiful experience. Um, that was my first time that I, um, I was giving back to the community where I, where I came but, from. But going back after a while and mm -hmm. feeling that kind of strange feeling because you've been away, that, that dissipated quickly because you just probably dove directly into your, into your memories and into your everything became just like, how, how long was your visit when you went back to visit? Um, it was three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. It seemed uh, much longer than three weeks, didn't it? It did. Yeah. It did. It um, felt way longer, yes. And, and your family, they obviously also saw a different person. In fact. Definitely. <laughs> except, like, who is this? <laughs> yes, except your mother. She would, you know, mother is mother. You yes, know. She yes. will just hug you and say, here's my son. Yes, yes. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, the, the food, the spices, the clothing, the colors, the, you know, all of the background and all this, obviously, is something that we... We definitely take advantage advantage of most of the time. We're not even aware that we're doing it. Correct. But it's uh, so. Did you get the chance to check the mood and the art and the artists and the creations there at all in well, any way, shape, art, or form? Art is everywhere. It's all over the country. You know. Um, They're um, more casual about it because everyone does it really. Exactly. Exactly. Um, it takes uh, um, uh, people do these things you know uh, for example with crates uh that was the first time i saw something created with crates in guatemala uh and now uh, you know they create all all these things with um different materials and uh but it's all over the country uh there is uh, graffiti on the walls there is uh um uh many many uh murals everywhere all over the country and the and the colors uh, from the natives, from their clothing, you know, is so colorful. And that's how it shows on my paintings. If you mm -hmm. see my paintings, they're very yes. colorful. Yes, yes, definitely. So uh, um, um, the, uh, let's say, did, did you get to see any, like, uh, um, uh, progressive uh, uh, new age or the kind of... Um, uh, uh, What's the word that I'm trying to say? Uh, um, eh. <laughs> it's, it's right there. It, you know, like a, like like a like a modern approach to art. Did you, you get to see like uh, any any kind of any type of artists that like kind of showing work that have the influence of the Western world or things of this nature? Or I'm I'm just trying to get into uh, the, um, the no mm -hmm. no I didn't see that to be honest. Um, um, that was one of the things that I noticed there, that uh, there is a lot of work, that there is uh, art everywhere, but it's very similar, mm -hmm. you know, and um, um, I, uh, that's where I come in. I come to disrupt a little. Yes, of know? course. <laughs> and, and maybe, and I, yeah. And, I, and this is what I bring to the kids, you know, to yeah. uh, think different, to create different types of pieces, abstract work, you know. Uh, most of the, the, the work over there is um, images. Figurative, uh, yeah. Figurative, yeah. yes. And, and their strength is with color, really, the compositions correct. and proximity and, you know, what's next to what. And um, So, you know, working with kids, obviously, well, I mean, you, do you see yourself exhibiting in Guatemala at some point? Is um, that something that uh, you think will excite you to do? Or maybe sure. go there and create the work and show it there? Or sure, sure. Just... Um, I'm, I'm actually uh, thinking of something. I have something in mind that I might like to do in the future. I don't want to yeah. um, uh, yeah. say too much about it because I'm, I just started uh, thinking yeah. about it. Yeah, absolutely. But um, I do, I do. I would love to show uh, in Guatemala. Yeah. I, I was in the same stage as you are, and, and then I, I, once I decided to uh, to start showing my work, I got a lot of help from the authorities in Tel Aviv, in Jerusalem, uh, mm. and I and I had some mega, 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 mega shows like talking about fifty thousand square feet mm -hmm. that the city can give you to, and and importing my work and all this. It was really, it helped me grow in the way that I wanted to grow here that I couldn't. Yeah. So I had to go all the way back home to do that, you know, to to have. Uh, at first, I was very reluctant. I said, you know, maybe they won't be able to relate to my work. On the contrary, they were so understanding of uh, abstract expressionism. 
impressionism, the impressionistic aspect of, of expressionism. You know, they understood the, the difference even. Sure. Uh, I had two people that helped me. Uh, I mean, usually it's $10,000 just for these two people to help me, and they, and they, and they did it for 1000 yeah. They were so taken and they were so giving. And, and they managed to explain to the world there, you know, what I'm all about. I couldn't do it myself, even if I tried. Yes. And it's my work. Yes. So it was very, it was a great influence uh, in, in, in that sense. And it took a while, but once it happened, I could not not do it every year. I had to do it every year, kind of. So, but yes. going back to your, to your, to the kids and all that. So what do you find out when you interact with these kids coming being born in Guatemala, moving to the States, and then going back to visit? Well, um, the first time that I did it, it was uh, very, like, emotional, to be honest, you know. Um, so I teach uh, fourth and fifth, fifth graders, you know, which it was at the age that I left the country. And um, um, I, um, I gave the first class um, uh, in 2017, I believe. And I, you know, it just happened that um, um, I, um, I, had, I, I met a, um, um, actually, it was my brother's friend from school that uh, she is actually the principal of a school, a small school in the city. And uh, she asked me, she said, would you be interested in giving an art class? You know, the kids need a little motivation. And I said, you know. I mean, do you think they want to hear from me? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What am I going to say? Well, I went and I gave the class. You know, uh, my class is very interactive. You know, I asked the kids, you know, uh, what they would like to be when they grow, you know, and I explained to them that we need artists, we need architects, we need doctors, we need, you know, every every uh, uh, person is, is, is needed, you know, uh, and um, um, so I gave the, the first class maybe two days uh, before I left the country. And so I left the country. Um, I didn't speak to her until the next time I was in the country. Mm -hmm. I called her and I said, uh, Mariloli, I'm here. You know, if you'd like to do the class, you know, I'm available. She said, Esli, I need to talk to you right away. I said, what's going on? <laughs> so we got together uh -huh. and she said, listen, the kids were so inspired that they did art not for one week. Not for one month. She said, for the rest of the year. Until you came back, yeah. Makes she sense. She said the books were full with drawings and all these yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, And I was like, wow. Yeah. I need to come back every year and do it. <clears throat> yes, that's that, that, that's great. You know, I uh, uh, I can share with you that when I, I worked with Project Most here, I don't know if you mm -hmm. know Project Most, uh, when they first started mm -hmm. about 17 years ago, um, and because I'm a drummer, I used to bring my drums and my canvas and my uh, and and we used to write poetry. So the blackboard was for poetry, the drums were for drums, mm -hmm. the paint, the canvas was. So the goal was to finish a canvas together, a group of maybe a dozen kids with me, mm -hmm. and a video camera. That I used to every time I used to come, I used to give one of the kids a video camera, and all he had to do is make sure that he's filming all the time, everything, yeah. you know. So it's. It's not professional, but it's creative. Yes. And I, I made them look the relationship between one medium to another because uh -huh. it's, it's easier to relate to a certain medium like painting when you talk about poetry. Correct. And then when you show them that actually to write a poem is an easy thing. Yes. And not intimidating, you know. And usually it is intimidating. Like, where do you start? Yes. Uh, Drums is the only musical instrument that you really can just immediately start playing on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, there is melodies, but no harmonies, whatever. But you, but you can just stamp on it. It doesn't matter. Yes. So I gave them an example <clears throat> on on how to write a poem because I wrote a poem instantly in like 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. Then I sat on the drum set and I played in a certain way to show them. I interacted on them. It's just five minutes. The poem and the drums... It's just five minutes. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I brought 300 tubes of paint, and I dumped it on the floor, and I started a session. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one-third of one hour is only head games. It's mm -hmm. like asking them, do you think we have enough paint? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said, okay, let's use only the blues. So we separate all the blues. And then the painting at the end, 
the painting is like with 20 different colors. Mm -hmm. So he said, you said you were going to use blue. And then we ended up using all the same. So I said, so what? This has nothing to do with our decisions. We make decisions only to change them. Yes. And, and I thought it was very important to teach them about the fact that when you cannot make up your mind, uh -huh. you need to be able to make up your mind very well in order not to be able to make up your mind. Meaning that you have a problem to pick up the colors that you want. To prove that actually there's no such thing as you cannot make up your mind, you ask yourself, okay, I'm going to use this blue and this blue and this yellow and this black and this green. I don't think I want the green. I put the green back. Mm -hmm. I'll take this pink. Mm -hmm. I'll take that black and I get uh, the, the gray. Mm -hmm. And they can back and forth, back and forth. You have to make decisions all the time when you change your mind. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Suddenly they started to understand that all these things is really head games that increase your chances of facing the canvas with the least amount of obstacles. Yes. Because the canvas speaks. The canvas acts, the canvas is alive, the canvas will give you a hard time, yes. the canvas might, might win, and you'll be the weaker, it will be the stronger, you know, there's all of these things. <laughs> so I gave them in a crash course introduction into uh, accept the weirdness of it, the weirdness is real, but once you accept it, it's just not there because mm -hmm. it's all over the place, mm -hmm. things of this nature. And like you say, the, I'm not surprised that you said that when you went back, they actually, a whole year, were busy and doing things in, in relationship to this interaction with you. Because I remember the first sessions that I gave there, I went to the head guy there and I said, I promise you that in 15 or 20 years from now, mm -hmm. they will remember me more than they will remember their immediate teachers. Mm -hmm. Even though I gave them three, four, five sessions of one hour. Correct. I promise you. They will come into the equation when they have to face life and creativity and technique. I will suddenly come to their memory, into the, yeah, this guy, I remember what he said. Yeah, yeah. Just, he was so right because I'm, I, I'm, I'm encountering these things right now, right here, right now. So, uh, so, so now you're like a little more careful maybe and you want to plan it to um, uh, more when you're them to get the maximum out of it? Well, what I uh, what I like to plan is more bringing uh, more materials, mm -hmm. to be honest, so I can uh, leave them with materials so they can keep working for the rest of, of the year. Yeah. They have something. Um, as far as the class, uh, yes, some things. For example, I really like the uh, uh, the camera idea. I uh, I was uh, I'm bringing a camera to my next trip. And uh, I will do actually what yes. you did to give it to one of the kids. It gives a sense of purpose. Exactly. You know? Yes. And have him film the, the, the whole thing. No restrictions. He can do anything he wants. He anything. interview this, while you actually teach. He can do anything he wants. Correct. Or she. Yes. Yes. So I, 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 I love that idea. Yeah. So I, I'm bringing that idea yeah. with me. And uh, music. Music is always part of the, uh, uh, the class. Yes. Uh, but it's pretty much uh, the same, you know. Uh, what I what I like to teach them is is pretty much the same thing that you did. Creativity in life, it takes creativity to uh, survive, to uh, do, uh, you know, to get to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I mean, I mean when, when you, so when, when you think of yourself as an artist, and uh, of course in the evolutionary process of uh, how you view yourself, do do you have like point A to point B to point C to point D? You see. The next five years or ten years, I mean, does it does it? Do you rationalize it? Do you uh, uh, is it is it uh, uh, to a certain degree a goal of yours to to see what stages are you hoping to uh, a, a cross by and, and achieve? Um, <laughs> so I used to carry a uh, Paris Art Museum museum booklet with me, and my goal was to get my work in that museum and I did you know um, now my goal is to um, um, get better at my craft you know um, I, uh, I accomplished you know uh, getting into a museum that, yep. you know I think that says something and so right now I want to take it you know higher me personally with my with my work so Explain to me what is higher. What do, what does it mean? Well, that is true. That's a good question. Uh, well, I just I I, I want to do other things. I wanna um, 
Um, I guess, like you said, I'm used to doing certain things a certain way. I want to push myself to do different things, mm -hmm. other things mm -hmm. than I'm used to doing. Yes. So improve your craft. Share with me. What, how do you, what would satisfy you by way of improving your craft? What, uh, what, right now, what is it on the surface? Like, um, uh, uh, more time. More time. More time. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I want to dedicate more time to it, which is very hard. But uh, uh, I'm I'm focused and I'm 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 looking to spend more time painting. I'm, I'm, I actually do exactly the opposite. I, I I look for less time and more creativity and more you know kind of because I don't have time. I have five kids, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it it, it 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 just doesn't. It's it's wishful thinking for me to think I'm going to spend time in the studio. Mainly the time that I spend in the studio is like when everyone is sound asleep you know and uh, I understand. so but i taught myself how to steal 10 minutes and 15 minutes here and there and yes uh, like this morning for example when i woke up and i had to get my kids ready for school and all that suddenly i saw a window of opportunity and i knew that i left the brush the way i did in the in the color that i wanted the night before mm -hmm. and i always do that by the way mm -hmm. i always leave certain things that when if i come back to it because i know i might come back to it for 10 minutes mm -hmm. then i don't have to look for it or anything it's right there so i went down and i applied a, a layer in a frenzy like trying to do it really quickly but maintain the integrity mm -hmm. of what i need to do mm -hmm. it was pretty successful Beautiful. and i said thank god i don't have to stay and see what the result i'm <laughs> leaving because they're calling me already <laughs> so that usually i want to do that I want to be able to do exactly that and leave immediately without having my kids calling me. That's a, that's really an important thing, I think, I to be able to just some, to sometimes just leave it. Yes. yes. Let it, you know, don't judge prematurely. Correct. This, your, your work and the surface. Correct. Sometimes you should, but more, yes. sometimes you should just let it be. Yes, yes. Let the paint, if it wants to travel, to drape, whatever it is, doesn't Correct. matter really. Correct. You, because you always, you already, I already established with the surface that I'm boss. Correct. You know, like yes. I, I'm, you know, you give me a hard time, I take a roller, I just paint it over you. You're done. You're <laughs> <That's> gone. <it. laughs> you're going to be white, black, whatever I want you to be. Correct. So it's really, I'm, I'm sure you understand what I'm talking about, and I talk a lot about it when I'm here. Yes. And it, it is real. Uh, you know, when I was said, when I shared with people that I hear voices sometimes or just as if someone is in the studio, it's because I'm really dedicated and deep into the process. Correct. So I hear myself. It's like I hear my interior organs externalizing and they're outside. I hear it. Yeah. So it's like when you hear your heartbeats, mm -hmm. I hear my heartbeats, but outside of myself, it's there. Yes. So, you know, it's uh, you need to interact with it. You need to come to terms with it yes. and only so you can put it aside and, and get on with work. Correct. The painting will not paint itself. You have to do it eventually. Definitely. Pick up the brush. So tell me about your relationship with with the with brushes, for example. I mean, do you did you ever taste paint? Did you yes, ever put of some course. paint in yes. there? Okay. I've had paint all over my mouth, and the next thing you know, you clean your mouth. And but <laughs> did you ever intentionally take a little bit of paint and taste it? I, I, yes. Okay. I I, because yes. I did that, I thought it was I need to do it at least yeah. once. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Put do it, it aside. Yes. 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 Um, so, tell me about your relationship with your brushes. What, 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 what kind of interaction, what kind of reality uh, resides there? Okay, well, I like my brushes dirty. You know, I like them uh, when they, they stick together with the paint and they have, like, you know, those spaces. Deformed. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, well, at first, when I started painting, uh, I actually started, you know, with a stick and cans of paint. So I did not use a uh, brush for a long time. Uh, now I, I'm, I'm using brushes more, but I like my paints to, to live a certain mark, you know, uh, uh, different than just a, a new brush. Um, I like to see the, the, the strokes. I like to see, uh, um, I like to see where the brush was, you know, um, very uh, definitive. I um, I started doing these um, um, hieroglyphics, and um, it was pretty much with a hard brush and black uh, oil paint. And uh, once I did it, I looked at it and I was like, "Whoa, this is one of the best pieces I've done." Yes. And it's black. All I used was black paint. Yes. You know. 
Yeah, yeah. But the strokes or the brushes and the way they came together, it was to me, it was beautiful. So, what other tools do you use? What other tools do you have? And and, well, and obviously, I would assume that you have, uh, um, uh, like like it's almost like I, I dare say an intimate relationship with your tools because mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. each one. I mean, I have sticks that I kept for years, yes, or brushes that are half soft, half yes. hard that, that I had for years. But I know where they are. I know yes. I will recognize it when I see it. I. Uh, you know, you know what I mean. It's yes. uh, it's it's not like oh, just a few sticks here. You know, I know everything. Yeah. It's almost like each each one of them has a name. Of course, it doesn't, but I know it uh, intimately. <laughs> so, t t talk to me about the intimate aspect of it and how it really, because everything counts in the in in creativity or at mm -hmm. least the desire to accomplish creativity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so how does it connect to that and how does it influence that and how much does it have to do with that level of creativity of yours <laughs> uh, having that intimate friendship relationship with your tools yes well it's very intimate I have um, spatulas I have uh, putty knives um, I have um, brushes I have some big brushes corona brushes you know the ones that you use for house painting uh, well I actually I have three uh, one is called Moniquita, one is called Jessica, and the other one doesn't have a name. Mm -hmm. I was just like, you don't have a name. But I've had those brushes for almost, uh, well, since I started painting. Yeah. You know, it just took some time for me to actually use them, mm -hmm. you know, but I always had them. And the reason why I had them was because uh, they were in my toolbox because I used to paint homes with my brother. Uh, I spent almost 10 years painting uh, houses. You know, and uh, I spent uh, another 10 years with my father doing masonry work. And so I actually, um, we used to use uh, drop cloths that um, we, uh, we did some uh, uh, stucco and stuff like that. And um, I ended up with those drop cloths and they actually are my art now. Yeah. I, I made art with those. Yeah. Uh, drop As a clothes. background, yeah, using yes. the base of it. Definitely. Yeah, perfect. And and the age, it was, you know, it looks yep. like something you can't do, you know, with your paintings. It's already there. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So do, do you interact with other artists? You have friend, artist friends that you like uh, chill with, uh, discuss, grow together, yes. share, exchange, interact, you know. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes. Uh, all of my friends are artists. Okay, that's good. Uh, DJs, painters. Uh, rock stars, you know, uh, uh, Jody Gambino, he just played here. The oh, other yeah, day, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, with Roger, it, amazing. They, yeah. they, they are great. Um, Alexander McHugh, great painter. Um, um, Wifi, he's a DJ, he's in the city. Uh, school bro, he's in Colombia, he's another DJ. Um, Lenny, Lenny Man, he's in Guatemala, he's another DJ. Mm hmm. Um, I, I'm, I'm, music is, is, uh, is a very big part of my life. Uh -huh. So, um, um, I know a lot of musicians. Yes, yes, yes. definitely. Yes. So, but, but I mean, in, I want, I was kind of hoping to get a little bit inside, uh, specifically about painters, friends, okay. you know, because, okay. you know, I, uh, I, I think out of the thousand artists that I know, maybe one of them came to my studio. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of them I invited mm -hmm. because I, I just don't like people coming into... A lot of, of people actually... It's funny, I was just talking to my friend about that. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people... I mean, I, I mean, if I go to my friend's uh, studio, mm -hmm. of course I would look around what he's doing, what she's doing, whatever it is. I mean, I want to have like, okay, uh, oh, let me take a good look what he's doing or she's doing. Maybe I can use some trick or mm -hmm. some whatever. Mm -hmm. I never look at it this way. It, it, I mean, which is okay to think about it this way. Yeah. But I have a lot of people who who tell me, share with me, uh, listen, if I'm going to come to your studio, if I see something that I can use, I'm going to steal it right away on the spot. I'm yeah. going to use it. Yeah. Like, so at first I was kind of making fun of it, not thinking too much about it. And I mm -hmm. said, you know, the nerve that this person has, how stupid can he be? Yeah. Telling me, you actually telling me, don't you dare ask me to come to your studio. And you know what? You're never going to come to my studio. Yeah. Not that I think it's just the greatest thing in the world to come to my studio, but I think I don't like someone coming to my studio and, and maybe 
you know, feeding on something that I had to slave for yes. and bring to life. Not that it's a secret and I'm like the best painter ever lived. It's just that it's, this, this, this is a result of hard work. It is. So have some respect. On it. So I spoke to that guy about the other guy that he mentioned, and I said, oh, yeah, that's the guy that not only that is going to steal my work, he lets me know that he's <laughs> going to do it. <laughs> so that's really bad, you know. Yes. This is bad news. Yes. So... Uh, I already let him know without telling him that he's not exactly. going to see the likes of my studio, Definitely not even not. remote control. Definitely <laughs> You're not. You're staying there. Definitely not. Another gallery owner also that uh, said, okay, my, uh, it's, it's custom that I come to, to artist studios. And I said, well, I think I need to interview you before you come to my <laughs> studio. And I didn't let him come to my studio. Yeah. And I said to myself, if he wants to cancel my art show here because I don't let him to my studio, it's fine by me. Yes. But he didn't. Yes. I said, this is, this is a big deal for me. It's very intimate. Very deal. Big, yes. big deal. Yes. So how do you uh, see yourself? I mean, do you see yourself like going to friends' studios or for whatever that means? Or, mm -hmm. or is there any, any interactions that are, uh, you know, uh, the, the kind that help us to grow? to grow from the side of having friends that are doing and having the same aspirations as we do. And mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's kind of easy to get feedbacks and to mm -hmm. learn just by conversing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, um, okay. So th this summer, um, actually I go to, uh, uh, friends studios when, when I'm invited, you know, uh, never with the idea of stealing anything, you know, to me, um, uh, seeing what other, maybe another, stealing is a harsh word, but you know but what it I mean. is. Yeah, you know, it if is. you put yeah, it that way, you yeah. know, and just the way he said it, I I, I noticed that. So you know, when I go to a friend's studio, I just go to appreciate their work and let them know how good it is. You know how I like it. Um, besides that, you know, I like to have my own identity. You know, and I think that's where I try to stay away from what another artist is doing. You know. Um, I had a, um, um, uh, this situation where I was working for an artist, you know, uh, many years ago. And uh, he was paying me, you know, uh, by the hour. But um, during that time, he saw my art. And he asked me, oh, can you do stuff like you're doing in your art, you know? And I said, yeah, sure. I spent the whole day. I finished this beautiful piece of work with my art and at the end of the day it was his art you know uh i went home and i was like mm -mm -mm, mm -hmm. what am i doing here yeah, what am I you doing? Know? yeah i know and i know sometimes yeah, I we called them and i said uh you know thank you very much for the opportunity but i don't think this is going to work out you know uh i already noticed that he wanted me to do all my art on top of his art to oh complement it oh my you god know? And, no. and still to this day he still uses my techniques or whatever I showed him. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, um, <laughs> you know what? It's, it's interesting. You know, we're very, you know, we're, we're alike in that sense that we're generous. You know, we want to uh, make people, uh, um, uh, I was generous with many people. I, I had a piece of artwork that was uh, uh, $20,000, and I, by mistake, I wrote 2000 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, a person came to me and said, I want to buy this piece. Mm -hmm. I said, Oh, great, 20000 uh, so, uh, so I go to put the red dot, and he said, uh, "It's two thousand, correct?" I said, "No, it's twenty thousand." And, uh, and so I said, it's, "It's just a mistake. It's a typo, and whatever." So, of course, he didn't buy it, whatever. So I said, "Leave me your card. You know, mm -hmm. we'll we'll talk." Mm -hmm. A week later, I called him and I said, "Pay me twenty five hundred dollars. I'll give you the piece." Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I feel like I'm obligated because it's my, I mean, it's crazy, yes. but I did it. Yes. And this guy became my ambassador. He couldn't believe that he's taking that I did that, actually. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and, you know, sometimes I just have to remind myself that I do it because I can do it. Yes. I don't need to ask for permission. Correct. You know, and I can create another five of them if I yes. want it, you know. It's like we know how to do things and all that. Correct. But also I uh, did a, uh, you know, I have a house painting company here for 40 years almost. So I finished a job for a newlywed couple in Watermill. And 
So I wanted to treat it for something special. So there was a wall, pretty big, I would say, nine feet by eight feet. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I'll, I'll do a wall painting for you as for your wedding, you know. Mm -hmm. I just felt like, I don't know. And I did something, nothing less than spectacular. Beautiful. And I didn't sign it. He kept on saying, sign it, please, sign it. I said, well, take your time. I want to take my time. Wait a second. I'm not done. <laughs> then in, in between, he started fighting with me about something about the job. And he called me a liar about something. I got so angry with him. And I said, I just made a $100,000 piece for you. Yeah. I don't know if you at all understand yeah, yeah. the extent of what I'm yeah. doing here. And I knew the mother of the bride. I know her for many years. We're friends and she's customers. She's a mentor. Mm -hmm. So I went to the mother and I said, you know, I just did something impeccable for this guy. This guy's like, I, I cannot live with the fact that he's going to enjoy my painting on the wall. So for a while, I thought I, I, I brought a tray and I said, I'm just going to paint it white right here and get it over with. That's what he deserves, mm -hmm. white wall. Mm -hmm. He should thank me that I painted the wall white mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do it eventually. And so I, I sent him an email and I said, you have to obligate it. If you're going to sell the house ever and not take the wall with you, you owe me $5,000. And I made him sign a document. Mm -hmm. It's yours, but if you sell the house and the painting will remain here, mm -hmm. you owe me that much money. And his mother-in-law signed, and he signed, and all this. And I said, you should be ashamed of yourself that you talk to me like that. Mm -hmm. I think when I quarrel with you for two, three hundred dollars that I charged you because I did extra work here and there, things like that. Yeah. Then I said to myself, no more. I will never do it again. I will never do it again. Yes, it's like no good deed goes unpunished. Correct. It's the other way around in life. Correct. You do something good, somehow you get punished. Correct. You give something uh, to someone free. E even when I give shoes to people for, uh, as a gift, mm -hmm. I say, give me $5. Yes. So it's yours. Yes. So you can never claim that you didn't buy it for me. Correct. It's $1,000, give me $5. Correct. I think that's, that's proper. Yes. But I've, I've given pieces away, small pieces. And I've been to the people's ho homes, and I see my piece on the side somewhere on the floor, not hung, you know. And it's I'm a, like, I'm, I'm looking at it. Mm, you know, you got a few thousand dollars sitting there on your <laughs> floor, and you don't even realize it, you know. <laughs> and it's like, I'm about to, like, take it back because you're not appreciating this work that I'm giving you. You know, this is, these are pieces of, of us, you know, it's a piece of me that I'm giving you because I thought, you know, like you said, just a good deed. And uh, that was when I had, you know, a hundred paintings in my studio and I, I didn't know what to do with them. That I would, you know, give them to certain people. And uh, no more. No more. No more. Yeah. Well, that stopped years ago. Yeah. No more. Well, I, I, once I, agree. I realized, you know, first I have to value myself. Yeah. That I cannot be giving out my work like that. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Exactly. So whoever wants my work, they have to, like you said, they have to pay for it. Yes. yes. And, you know, I have had a lot of artists that actually came and said, listen, I would appreciate if you can you know, to have a piece of yours, if you want to give me a small piece. Mm -hmm. And I respect them. I know them. I like their work. I like, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I'm gladly doing it. That, in exchange. That's, yeah. Yes. In, in exchange, there's friendship. Definitely. Like right there, you know, you're my friend. And, and I look at your work and I say to myself, wow, okay, you know, it's like, Thank you for wanting my work. Definitely. I, I can think of myself, everything that I can think of myself, but still I'm humbled when I have someone that I appreciate mm -hmm. wants my work and all this. And you know, listen, you know, people don't have the money, really. Correct. We don't have the money. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I can tell you I sold this, I sold that, but, you know, the, the following week I don't have anything left. Because it's just, you're already behind. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> By yeah, the yeah, time yeah. you sell the painted, yeah. And, and also, you know, you have five kids. and Yes. It's 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 a, it's a long story, yeah. but you but uh, you, you said the Hampton Bays or West Hampton Beach. What is the scene there? Even though I'm quite familiar, yes. but I'm not familiar because I t t talk to me a little bit about. Well, because uh, you might as well say like in another state, you know. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, the scene uh, over there is not like here, you know, like East Hampton, South Hampton. Uh, I've shown my work over there at a few places. Um, 
but I think people over here appreciate it more. Yeah. You know? Um, my friends are here. Uh, uh, my artist friends are here. Um, this summer, I had the chance to uh, spend uh, time with Jody, Alex, Sam, uh, Daniel, uh, in their house in East Hampton, and uh, they had a studio and everything. And, uh, you know, I kept telling the guys, I'm like, listen, guys, we can do some pieces together, like all together, you know, let's let's do it. Um, and we did. We uh, we have, uh, I, I believe, two pieces, beautiful pieces. Maybe we can show it in the future yeah. shows here. Yes, I, I told uh, Jody. I yeah, said, I'll talk you to know, him about I wanna, it. I want to talk to him about yeah, it. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And, uh, and so we have two beautiful pieces that we did as a group. It's uh, four or five artists, you know, and, and one painting. And uh, I felt that was uh, needed uh, because um, I, I understand... Um, the the energy behind it just to have five artists involved oh, yeah. in one painting and no ego that was see that was the biggest thing y that yeah. we spoke about the biggest is, success yeah, is to like no ego no ego <laughs> which is when as friends and we created this beautiful piece yes you yes know? and uh i'm very happy that's i think that's one one of my best accomplishments yeah to get this many artists and to do this beautiful oh work. yeah and, and you know what i i, I want to uh Give you the 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 the, uh, the uh, image of uh, uh, working with twelve second graders, mm -hmm. okay, uh, you know seven eight years old, having all the paint in the world, the drum set, blackboard, video camera, mm -hmm. and then I go to the drums and 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 I I show them how I play and I ask them what do you see, then they give me the explanation, mm -hmm. and then I said okay, each one is gonna go on the drums, we'll get. 90 seconds you play i can give you pointers i can keep quiet but you do your thing mm -hmm. and immediately you go i'll have the brush ready for you with the paint mm -hmm. and you're going to have to concentrate and so you doing that and then you give me a word to write on the blackboard mm -hmm. so word drum canvas word and then you have 12 12 people doing that three times over and suddenly they realize that it, it well it, and then at the end but at the end of the session, I take five minutes and I finish the painting. Mm -hmm. And I show them how I finish the painting, like mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. And they're like, wow, how we, they see how the work is elevated and all this. But once I ask them, try to hit the drums and the cymbals as softly as possible. Let's see who does it the softest possible. So I didn't have to wait long mm -hmm. before one of the kids... Just hit it without hitting it at all, just next to it. Mm -hmm. So right there I knew that this is genius, yeah. that he's hitting the air. And I told him, think about the shortest word that you can come up with. So they understood that the shortest word after they said uh, whatever is or, or, or even uh, one letter, let's just say ah. Oh. Okay, <laughs> but but then but then they realize there's got to be something that is almost silent, like gesture, you know. So you understand when you do that, you understand that we want to do the same thing on the canvas. How do you translate this? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. how do you translate this on 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 the what what word? So you when you you don't have to look at the blackboard. You give your word, and then we'll see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can leave it alone. We can rearrange it and all this. But then you realize that this is something they cannot forget. Correct. You cannot forget that. When you talk to them about serious things in a casual way, like, listen, you just played on the drums, mm -hmm. and I filmed everything. I mean, no, the kids filmed everything. Mm -hmm. I sent some of the material to my friends in Israel, like 90 seconds of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a kid playing on the drums freestyle. Mm -hmm. Mind blowing. Of course. We have thousands of hours of underground recordings wow. and we're still impressed by it. Wow. Some of them I sent to some uh, world renowned pianist and I said, Look at this girl, what she's doing. Yes. Fantastic. But they have to have that seal. We need to make sense for them. Say, yes. Listen, this means greatness. Yes. Yes. We should let them. And know. we have the proof, the yes. video. It's not like it's here and it's gone. It's here. Yes. This is greatness, yes. and it com completely belongs to you. This is you. Correct. There, you know what I mean? Correct. 
So, um, it, it, so on, on one hand, you show them you can really play the drums nice. Mm -hmm. On the other, you can play like a two-year-old yes. and realize that there's no much difference. But you want to get the credit that you know what you're talking about. That's why you need to show them that you can, that you can play nice yes. and, and proper. Yes. And so it goes to the canvas. Listen, you don't have to have aspirations that you one day you're going to become a painter. Mm -hmm. But if you can digest it, mm -hmm. then this can really benefit you in the future with whichever artistic endeavor you're going to encounter. Correct, correct. And we need to remember that as artists because obviously, I mean, I'm, I'm sure when you go with these kids, you leave the classroom elevated and like Definitely. somewhat positively hyper. Definitely. Huh? And, and that's where I get my ideas from too, you know, because uh, uh, kids, they're... they're brains are so fresh and they do these drawings that now when we're older we don't think about you know mm -hmm. um yes it's it's very interesting working with with the kids um i just want to see how much time we have i'm sorry sure sure oh great we're good yeah <laughs> yeah it's very interesting working with the kids i uh i love it you know uh that is the reason why i i do it you know, uh -huh. and I, ju I just want to keep uh, bringing them uh, inspiration, you know, if yep. anything, so they can uh, they can use in life, not only in paintings, like you said. Absolutely, and, and more power to you in that sense. I also just wanted to mention that we're sitting here with Esli Escobar on uh, the 26th day of January, uh, a Thursday morning here with the Hello Hello Show, and my name is Chaim Israhi. Also, uh, Esli is a part of the, uh, the uh, group of artists we have here. Steve Rom, uh, Dalton Portella, um, um, Casey Chalam Anderson, um, uh, Josephine Wustuschak, and uh, Esli Escobar, and myself also. And um, so that's going to be through uh, um, February 24th. Uh, we're going to have an opening and a closing ceremony. So uh, we'll see. I will give you all the information later. So uh, you, you're just about to travel back to. Uh, to uh, and Guatemala and yes. all this, so um, I bet you're excited, and uh, so and and um, and um, so it's going to be more of the same, the creative aspect of your engagement, and correct. Um, yes, well, this this trip I want to do more. Uh, when I say more, I I want to uh, do more classes in different schools, different areas of the country. Um, I also want to see if I can do. Uh, some murals. I've, I've never done murals. All uh -huh. my work is on canvas, you know. Um, and so I want to see if I can do murals, let the kids go in and do everything, and then I can go in and finish the, the, the mural. You yeah. Know? Uh, in a way that was, uh, that, it's, on, it's on my mind. But I do want to do more uh, these four weeks that I will be in Guatemala. That's great. Uh, first of all, I really, I wish you luck. and. Thank you. A pleasure to meet with you, and uh, it feels like we know each other longer than we really are. I, uh, I'm sure that we're going to uh, work together somehow in the future. Maybe yes. I can invite you again towards the winter for a special show. Maybe uh, for the next show here, especially, you can create especially for the show. That would be and beautiful. it can be something that is will give you an opportunity to even change your style completely. Yes. I mean, you saw the paintings that I told you, oh, by the way, these are mine. You never thought that they're no. mine in a million years. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that's, we want to keep people surprised, you exactly. know? Exactly, yes. This is something I can do again. This is something I already registered in my memory. Mm -hmm. can always go back to it if I wanted to. Uh, and then when I venture, I don't forget. Yes. I have a photographic memory, which yes. is very helpful. So I not only remember shapes and colors in proxim uh, proximity to one another, mm -hmm. I remember uh, evolutionary process. Because yes. yeah. for the first two years when I was creating, I never kept a record of, I created a piece of art and I wanted to do it again. I couldn't, I don't remember. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I made a point to remember <laughs> what I'm doing and all that. So that's, uh, so uh, again, um, um, it's a pleasure to meet you, and it's a pleasure to have you here, and hopefully we'll get to work uh, together in the future, and I'm sure that people here at the Institute of Long Island, especially East Hampton, will get to know you better by uh, and vis-a-vis -vis this, uh, this uh, interview. And whether you believe it or not, we just spent 55 minutes. Wow. Huh? Wow. Yeah, that was effortless, <laughs> no? Yes. So we're going to be here tomorrow as much as we were here yesterday mm -hmm. and as much as we're here this morning, January 26, year 2023, here with the Hello Hello Show. My name is Chaim Mizrahi. Again, thank you to my guest, Esli Escobar. And keep up the good spirits. 
And uh, we'll see you sooner than later. Again, thank you, Asli. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Hein. God bless you.